Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome. Today we are going to talk about a very important social linguistic situation where uh, a speech community uses two varieties for two different social functions. And uh, one variety supersedes the other variety and you know owing to the social situations and uh, this phenomenon is called diglossia so today we are going to talk about diglossia now di means two and glossia the language the tongue so two languages within the same speech community and why and how this situation emerges, we'll talk about it. So that's all about diglossia that we're going to talk about today. So diglossia is a linguistic situation in which a speech community uses two different languages or varieties of the same language for different social functions. This is a very uh, relatively very stable situation where the choice of varieties in a particular social context is deliberate and socially de determined. It has different social functions. Uh, out of these two varieties that the community uses, which community uses, one form is the literary or prestige form or a prestige dialect and the other is a common colloquial dialect spoken by most of the people for ordinary everyday life situations. Uh, such a situation exists in many speech community, right? Uh, you know, but diglossia is not a substitute term for bilingualism. We need to understand. Diglossia definitely denotes bilingualism, but they cannot, you know, replace each other. They are two different ideas, two different concepts. Bilingualism refers to the innate ability or capacity of an individual speaker to use two languages with equal ease and diglossia refers to a specific situation where this innate bilingual capacity is in practice. So where it is actually practiced. So diglossia refers to the social context and a linguistic situation that allows a bilingual to choose particular variety for a particular purpose. So they are not uh, mutually, uh, you know, uh, replaceable terms. They cannot be replaced by one another. There are two different notions. Diglossia refers to the language use in a particular social context, whereas bilingualism refers to the innate capability and the ability of the user or the speaker to choose from two distinct linguistic uh, repertoire. So that is the difference between bilingualism and diglossia. We need to keep in mind before we move further. Okay, so such a situation, diagnostic situation exists in many speech communities around the world. So this is not a rare phenomenon. It is a, a very widespread global phenomenon and we can have instances and examples of such a situation 
across the world, across speech communities. Uh, for example, in Greece, a heavily influenced classical Greek versus a uh, demotic, a uh, popular spoken language. Or in Arab world for that matter, classical Arabic exists alongside the colloquial Arabic of let's say Egypt, Morocco and other countries. So these are the varieties of the same language, but both the varieties have two different purposes. You know, context of use. Right. Uh, India is a multilingual country, but we have diagnostic situations here as well. Uh, for example, in Tamil speech community, and this established research, uh, it is it is considered multiglossic. I mean, within the same speech community, you have multiglossia. So, diglossia refers to only two varieties, multiglossia, multiple varieties. Uh, Bangla speech community for that matter. In Bengali, you have the same diglossic situation. Uh, if you look at broadly, the standard Hindi that we use for writing and informal domain is entirely different from uh, the kind of Hindi that we use on the street, in bazaars, in markets, right? Uh, in everyday conversation, interaction and socialization process. So we have uh, two distinct varieties. That spoken Hindi is also referred to as Hindustani. There may be uh, you know academic academic debate about in the status of Hindustani and Hindi. But broadly if you look at, there are two distinct varieties of course. As far as standard written Hindi is concerned, with spoken or uh, colloquial Hindi on the street, definitely there is a difference at all levels. And, and this difference is apparent specifically in terms of lexico, uh, lexicons, words, choice of words. Uh, if you look at uh, these two varieties, a diagnostic situation where two varieties are being used. Uh, for two different purposes. Actually, this, this word was coined and first introduced by Ferguson in 1959. Uh, you know, let's go to that. Yes, Ferguson in 1959. And before I move further, let me quote from Ferguson, right? Charles Ferguson. And uh, a very important uh, example that he gives in his Diglossia published in 1951. He says, of the four, I quote, of the four defining languages, Arabic Diglossia seems to reach us as far back as our knowledge of Arabic goes. And the superposed classical language has remained relatively stable, while Greek diglossia has roots going back many centuries. But it became fully developed only at the beginning of the 19th century with the renaissance of Greek literature and the creation of a literary language based in large part on previous form of literary Greek. Swiss-German diglossia developed as a result of long religious and political isolation from the centers of German linguistic standardization, while Haitian Creole arose from a creolization of Pigeon French, with standard French later coming to play the role of the superposed variety. For convenience of the reference, the superposed variety in Diglossia will be called the H capital H, high variety or simply H and the regional dialect will be called L, capital L, low varieties or collectively simply L. This is from uh, Ferguson uh, 1959, I unquote. Now, so we get the two terms, superposed variety and the other is colloquial 
spoken variety. So he refers to superposed variety as capital H in quotes high and the colloquial variety or the spoken variety, the spoken variety uh, as capital L in quotes low code. Now we need to understand here very clearly, it's not about asymmetry linguistic asymmetry. It's not about putting one variety over the other variety. High the word may be misnomer, high and low words may be misnomer and confusing because it's not about value judgment, right? It's not about value judgment that you are assigning a lot of prestige value to H and uh, you know you are deriding or putting at a lower strata variety L. He termed H and L variety or code to distinct H from L and L from H and also underline the fact the degree of formality. So the degree of formality attached to H is higher than degree of formality attached to L. But by no means H means high, pure, classical language and L means low, uh, lower on the strata and uh, you know, uh, any, in, any inferior to H, right? So no inferiority value attached to it, no superiority value attached to it. These are the terms just to understand and distinguish between these two varieties. So we have to keep the, the, them in mind when we talk about high and low, right? Uh, so, two very prominent examples we can quote from Indian, uh, you know, linguistic diversity or Indian ecology, linguistic ecology. One is in in Bangla speech community we have two varieties, Cholit Bhasha and Sadhu Bhasha. Now both are Bangla, but Cholit Bhasha, uh, you know, a colloquial Bangla versus Sadhu Bhasha or chest standard Bangla that you find in the poetic tradition and uh, written form. Schiffman 1996 describes Tamil linguistic culture as multiglossic, like Sen Tamil, literary Tamil, classical Tamil and probably they all refer to the same variety. That is one code which, which you call H code. I won't call it high or low, but H code. Let's let's understand H code, superposed codes, or uh, code or H code. Uh, this is also known as you know other variety like Pandit Tamil, modern Tamil, standard colloquial Tamil, standard colloquial Tamil, Kotun Tamil, formal Tamil, and so on. So you find uh, these varieties with certain degree of formality attached to them, right? This degree can vary from high to low. And uh, you can find this, this study uh, on Tamil, this comment on Tamil in Schiffman uh, 1996, Linguistic Culture and Language Policy, London and New York, Rutledge, Linguistic Culture and, and uh, you know, as multi-classic, right? Um, so what we can deduct out of this discussion? The diglossia is definitely a bilingual phenomenon where the user or the speaker has two linguistic resources, right? Two linguistic varieties at his or her disposal to choose from pertaining to a particular social context or you know context of use domain of use uh, it was first identified and introduced by charles a ferguson in 1959 diglossia may develop from various origins and eventuate in different language situations we can deduct 
Diglossia is a type of linguistic situation in which one language variety is used for writing and another for speech. To be to be very uh, broad, so we can understand broadly that a distinct, deliberately chosen, preferred variety of the same language in written form, or in education, higher education, or in literature, or in all formal domains. And the other one, the colloquial version of the same language used in everyday life for all non formal social contexts. Right? And when people are bi dialectal, that means they have uh, at, the, at their exposure, uh, you know, disposal, two different dialects of the same variety. They can use two dialects of the same language based on their surroundings or different context where they use one or the other language variety, you know, uh, interchangeably. Then I, in the beginning, also introduced the fact that diglossia cannot be interchanged with bilingualism. So, diglossia and bilingualism are not interchangeable they definitely denote each other. So, bilingualism is denoted by a diglossic situation where the, the speaker or the language user has two varieties at his or her disposal and chooses from two distinct linguistic systems, right, to, to use in a particular social context. So, diglossia, a linguistic situation according to the use of varieties for different social contexts within the same speech community. Whereas, bilingualism refers to the innate capacity of the speaker to use two varieties or more in the case of multilingualism for different social function. So, diglossia refers to the situation of use of the language. And bilingualism refers to the ability of the user to use varieties for different purposes. So, that distinction we have to understand and make while talking about diglossia. Now, we also need to underline the fact what Ferguson called H high variety versus low L varieties. Right, but this is particularly for convenience. Ferguson himself mentions it. I quote: "For convenience of reference, the superposed variety in diglossia will be called the H capital H high variety, or simply H, and the regional dialect will be called capital L low varieties, or collectively simply L." So, Ferguson himself, you know, makes it very clear that we are not going to assign any value judgment on these varieties, right? It's not about a stratification of languages in the community, speech community. It's not about placing uh, value or high prestige to H variety and, you know, looking down low variety or you know L variety, L code. It is all about convenience for understanding the fact that these two varieties differ in the in the in terms of degree of formality that we have to understand. Okay. So no value judgment assigned, linguistic attitude remains neutral. And the terms are used for contrast and opposition between varieties and their functions. So, we have to understand this very clearly that we are not going to assign any value judgment on that. But of course, we do understand when we talk about diagnostic situation, we do understand that we have either two distinct varieties of the same language or it may be two different languages, Swiss German versus Standard German, right? It may be the case where you choose one particular variety for your colloquial everyday transactions and uh, the other standardized, codified and restricted variety 
for all formal occasions and purposes maybe in literary works maybe in you know formal highly formal domains like parliamentary uh, transactions in judiciary in education so it depends uh, what what domain are we talking about and specifically this h variety is more often seen in the written form than in the spoken one and perhaps that's the reason why i brought in hindi and hindustani dilemma because there may be a political debate on on this 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 example but if we understand that hindustani or the colloquial hindi spoken in the market in the train when you travel from one place to other in all ordinary everyday life is entirely different in terms of choice of words and lexicons when we talk about standard hindi texts literary works or standard hindi writings in uh, parliament transactions or maybe in education textbooks and other other places we don't find that colloquial variety of hindustani which is named as hindustani there so but no value judgment at all that's what i'm trying to emphasize and we need to keep in mind so what are the characteristics and properties of this l code okay let's not talk about low variety but let us name it as l code and l we all know right what are the what are the uh, basic characteristics of of this variety so number 1 it is domain specific it is social context specific and highly informal casual and informal and this gives a lot of flexibility for you you are not consciously using it it's a very natural form in its natural form spontaneously we are using this colloquial variety with ease without any effort so it gives you lots of flexibility and it changes over time and space because it is owned by people and not restricted codified and prescribed so it has a you know option of growing changing and uh, you know lots of changes takes place takes take place in due course of time uh it varies in terms of pronunciation choice of words we call lexicons sometimes grammatical rules grammar rules also in certain cases tamil is one of the examples that you know the same word for the same function you have two different words and they are pronounced differently so it varies in terms of pronunciation lexicons and grammar rules from the h code or h variety and it is used for everyday informal communication and socialization right so these are the characters of l code right when we look at the characteristics of h code it is highly formal it is of course domain specific social context specific but degree of formality is very high so highly formal just and you know mostly in written form so it's like you know in, in written forms uh, it becomes almost like frozen variety because uh, you have hardly any choice so it is it is highly codified restricted and prescriptive it gets institutional support when i say institutional support that means it is used in education it is used in uh, you know parliamentary transactions but not in oral form but in written form because you might see people speaking in parliament they are speaking a natural colloquial hindi for that matter but when the same thing is recorded in minutes you find a different variety highly sanskritized formal variety of hindi in written form uh, it remains the situation remains stable because the dynamism is in the l code but you find less dynamic non flexible variety which is the h code 
changes of course changes takes place but very slowly as far as compared to the l code changes in h code is very slow it 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 has a puritan view i mean you know classical puritan view right by for example standard hindi in written form derives heavily from sanskrit right uh, it also defines linguistic attitude power and status right and uh, it is a literary and prestige dialect so i hope now we are clear about l code and h code we have to keep in mind that it can be just two distinct varieties of the same language or in certain cases it can be two different languages where we have degree of formality associated with these two distinct varieties and we choose one for one purpose the other for other purpose and it is it is like a social contract where all the speakers in the speech community understand and uh, practice this linguistic use in the similar fashion so diaglossic situation the what we call so what are the social linguistic implications for uh, diaglossia it marks definitely it marks power uh, you know status and prestige attached to h variety uh, it marks linguistic attitude then it also marks linguistic preferences according to the social context where these are used of course it has a stratification of the varieties where l is used for non uh, non formal uh, you know purposes in social or non formal social contexts where the h variety is used for highly formal uh, social contexts right purely uh, mostly in written form and uh, it definitely the l variety is very you know instrumental in construction of identity and equally h variety also determines and it, it, one of the determinants of the construction of linguistic identity uh socialization and bonding and of course the together mark a larger social function so this is what all about diaglossia and a linguistic situation what what we call diaglossic situation where two distinct varieties of the same language or in certain cases uh two distinct varieties are used for two different purposes within the same speech community and uh, it denotes bilingual innate capacity of the speaker to choose from two different uh, linguistic sources diaglossia and bilingualism are not interchangeable diaglossia refers to the context of use whereas bilingualism refers to innate capability of the individual speaker to choose from two different linguistic sources so i hope uh, this idea social linguistic idea concept called bilingual uh, sorry uh, diaglossia is clear to you and uh, we'll come back to to diaglossia once again when we talk about bilingualism in in some other video so thank you very much